Welcome back to the poor man's workshop. We got a little update on the Chicopee build and uh, some some of the warts, some of the mistakes. Uh, I think since the last time I've done an update, I've made a new hammer and I've got to make another new one. Uh, made some mistakes. There's the old one. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, I've also made a new receiver block. The reason being that this tenon here on the original, which is right here, was several thousandths too small. And let's see, I don't know if you can see that or not, but we're down um, 748. And working with quarter inch material inside here inside here at, at 748 that would make the plates if I welded it up it would make the plates too narrow this way and there would not be any freedom in the working action here so we made a new one and it's quite large in between and we're at 776 so I've got a little bit to play um, learning how to do machinist stuff I've learned it's a whole lot easier to take more metal off than it is to actually put it back on so we made this one a little bit bigger so um, got the lock in here and and the plans it calls for right here to put a uh, a pin just drill a hole and put a pin in there so that and then drill a corresponding hole in the hammer strut to uh, so they would interlock that way at full cock you could not open the action this is the locking piece for the action um, I didn't like the looks of that looked rather chintzy to me so I stole the idea from somebody else off the internet I just made these two parts interlocking uh, they're not fitted by no means yet we're working on it um, it's slow going trying to fit all this uh, not any real updates to the insides uh, made the locking bar the first one I cut way too deep and had way too much play it really can't be fitted properly this piece and this piece until this is welded in there and that's going to be a little while off so um, I may end up having to make a new one of these with this being taller um, getting some interference also down here between the trigger and this um, I'm getting kind of a camming action also but you know all this is going to change whenever it gets all put together and fitted up um, yeah I'll probably end up having to make another one of these just like I've done everything else uh, all this is learning so um, like I said the interference right here I don't know if I've made that to the right size or the hole should be generally in the right place now let's see let's take this off let's take this out let's knock some pins out and get get to that hammer actually i'm just going to knock the hammer pin out now this was the original one i cut out And where they call for a little bit, well, let me go ahead and knock these, out, these pins out too. Let's see. Oops. Mm, hammer. There's 
trigger. That one falls out. Breech piece. Now these are drilled holes. They are not reamed, so they are not perfect. Um, there's the makeshift set screw for the cross bolt. And this thing, for some reason, this side loves to be tight. Okay. Now we'll mock it back up right quick. And main thing I want is this in here so you can see the relationship. Oh, wrong pin. And this. All right, they call for an eighth of an inch distance between the hammer and this. This is going to contain the firing pin. And this is the safety notch. And so with the original hammer that I screwed up filing, um, yeah, you can see I really dug around and screwed that up quite a bit and figured, well, screwed up, might as well screw up some more and see what not to do. So I made some more notches. Um, with the original hammer, I had no gap here. And so I made another hammer and didn't have cold rolled. I had hot rolled and it was slightly larger. So I tried to use the mill. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I've got a, uh, I tried to use the mill to thin it out. And I thinned it out perfect on this side and way too much on this side. Uh, a drill press vise is not what to use on a mill. So especially on a little mill like I have. So we've got another piece cut out and dimensioned the way it's supposed to be. Um, waiting on parts for the mill or actually the lathe. Um, this is not threaded yet. So got to thread this. I'm probably going to use just a tap for this. Uh, not any good at threading. Uh, got some practice still so I can practice on the barrel. And there's been a few questions about what tools I've been using. This uh, is a Nicholson flat bastard. Well there's the Nicholson sign and there's it's a flat bastard. This is what I've used for most of the metal removal uh, I find it easier to use a file, especially on the small parts, getting them to shape and dimension uh, with the file than it is with the mill for me since I'm still learning. Um, this edge still has the grooves on it, removes a lot of metal fast. This edge I've taken a grinder to and smoothed. That way you can, you can file in a corner and know you're only filing on one edge and this edge here should be okay. You're not going to make a groove going back that way. Uh, second most used is another Nicholson and this one is smooth. Double cut smooth I believe. Um, haven't had a need to safe edge on that one. Uh, half round comes in handy also. And these files, all of them are about 8 to 10 inches long. Um, yeah, even though this is a Nicholson, I put a cheap handle on it. Um, same thing with this one. Uh, this is a workhorse. I think it's a cheap one from Walmart or something. You see where I messed up that, doing other stuff I shouldn't be doing. Um, needle files, small files. Small triangle there's a little square it doesn't get used much and half round that one gets used quite a bit and another one of my 
favorites. This came out of my chainsaw sharpening kit. Uh, this is for setting the rakers, raker height on your chainsaw blade. Both sides are safed. It's got a nice smooth cut. It's about six inches long. Picked it up at uh, Lowe's. And then for like the brass soft materials, a cabinet maker's rasp. Comes in real handy for fast stock removal. Um, had this piece of half inch brass laying around. So I've started uh, making the trigger guard and experimenting and learning how to use my mill and learning how to screw up with the mill twice as fast as you do with hand tools. Uh, sometimes three, four times faster. That's about it. Uh, I'm starting to feel more like a real machinist. I got my first can of uh, layout fluid. They didn't have the brush on. It was only spray can. Uh, don't like it. It gets everywhere. And uh, that's about it. The mill and lathe combo is still a lot of learning to do on it. And but we're getting there. Uh, I think I'm also going to do a separate video maybe on the uh, jig I made up for making this face here. The shoulder. Um, that may be a little bit later. But um, didn't have a mill or anything along those lines to make this had to figure out a different way and I'll get to that a little bit later but I just wanted to give a little quick update on some of the changes some of the things uh, some of the learning experiences so uh, I guess that's gonna do it for now thanks for joining